everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back at it again with another episode. And this week, it's the last Batman 66 episode. I had originally planned on doing episodes for Series 5 and 6, but then Figures Toy Company had to go and jack the price up on the boxed figures. Now, instead of $20 per figure, these things have apparently gone back up to $30, and that's even for the ones in the cardboard boxes. Now, I needed four more figures to finish the main series, but there's seemingly hundreds of different variant figures in this line, and some of those were exclusives or out of production, so it's not like I was ever going to get every single figure. I do feel bad for leaving the reviews unfinished, and since I already have half the figures from series 5 and 6, we might as well take a look at what's left. Before we review what I do have, let's take a look at the figures in the main line that I was unable to grab. First up from series 5 is Barbara Gordon. I do like this figure, but honestly, I don't feel like I'd need Bruce Wayne or Dick Grayson, so Batgirl's alter ego wouldn't have been a must-get for me, really. Also from Series 5 is Chief O'Hara. I'm on the fence with O'Hara. He's a main character from the show, and when you look at who did get figures, he certainly deserves his own figure in the line. But I can't help but think of how we never got a Commissioner Gordon figure. I'm sure it has to do with the likeness rights, and at least they didn't pull a Mego and make some shitty looking one that wouldn't fit the line, but it still kinda sucks and makes the whole line feel incomplete. Finally from Series 6 is two Alfred variants, Egbert Pennyworth and Alfred disguised as Batman. That's it. It's just Alfred in different costumes, and honestly, it felt like 20 was too much to pay for these, much less $30 a piece. And like I said before, Figures Toy Company went on to create a mountain of variants that for one reason or another, I was never going to get anyway. And now for the figures I was lucky enough to get for $20 a piece. First from Series 5 is Batman with the removable cowl. This was probably on a lot of collectors' must-get lists for this line. Also from Series 5 is Batgirl, another must-get in my opinion. And finally in Series 6 we got not one, but two cat women, Julie Newmar and Eartha Kitt. If you were going to get the bad guys too, Catwoman, or women, would likely be on the top of most collectors' must-get lists. Today, we're also going to take a look at some variants that I picked up as well, so let's not waste any more time and take one last look at the Batman TV show figures from Figures Toy Company. Okay, let's go ahead and start with Removable Cowl Batman. Of course, Batman played by Adam West. Um, and we do have Adam West's likeness underneath this Removable Cowl. It's actually pretty easy. Just comes right off. Um, looks great with or without it. This was definitely a must-get on most people's lists if you were going to get uh, these figures, um, if you're going to get a number of these figures. Removable Cal Batman's pretty cool, and he actually looks, unlike a friggin' Robin figure, looks pretty damn good with the cowl on or off. So, pretty goddamn awesome there, but you know what? We've seen these figures before. It is basically the same exact Batman figure, the same exact Batman figure that had the new expression, the same exact Batman figure from the first one with the exception of the head. The head is the same as the Bruce Wayne figure. It's just sort of a reconfiguration of things we've seen before with the exception of the removable cowl. And the removable cowl, you could actually slide this onto a few other people's heads, which is kind of cool, so you could put other people in a Batman costume, which is what they did later on in uh, the last series with uh, Alfred as Batman. So um, what you have here is, if you already got a Batman figure, and maybe you don't really give a shit about having Batman in um, his, uh, you know, with a removable cowl, you could put anybody in a Batman costume and put the mask over their heads. So, there you go. It's uh, it's Removable Cow Batman. 
Okay, every once in a while, um, almost every every series of these Batman figures, we have something that that shows that despite the fact that there are serious issues with quality, despite the fact that the the, the build of these bodies is is cheap and uh, and they are you know very brittle and they'll come across come apart very easily. They're they're super easy to break, especially the female bodies. Um, despite all that. You get a figure in this Batgirl figure that is fantastic looking. Look at this cape. Look at this costume. Look at this facial sculpt. This thing is amazing. I didn't think that we were really going to see another great figure in this line um, here moving forward. Now that I've stopped, now they've jacked the price back up for $30. I still don't think this is necessarily worth it for $30. There are some little issues. Her ankle seems to be permanently like fucked up for some reason. It does help her pose a little bit better. Um, her her build, you kind of get what you get with these builds. Sometimes they're strung too tight and the arm is just permanently sticking back out. We'll see something like that later. Um, but with this one, she seems to be pretty poseable or as poseable as she's going to be. Um, if they were using S-type bodies, if they were using bandless bodies, bodies that didn't have rubber bands, hooks, bullshit inside of them, um, man, this thing would be a damn near perfect figure. Look at the sculpt on that. Look at the hair. It's plug hair, but it's nice. It doesn't look like shit. Um, comes all the way down the back here. It's plugged into the back of the mask. They didn't do a removable cowl uh, for her. And honestly, you wouldn't really want one. It would look kind of dumb. This looks fucking great. I love this figure. This is my favorite figure, um, at least in this episode. It is a really great figure. It is one that is definitely going to hit the display um, you know, permanently here. You're not going to see this get put back away. Um, this is something that would be a must get for most collectors. And they finally, you know, went back to the, the you know, the, the final, uh, one of the final series here in the line to get, get it taken care of. Again, brittle fucking bodies. Her wrist is fucking coming out here on the, on the arm. Um, you got some fraying on the costume. Um, very, very thin, light joints. I feel like dude, it would be, it would take no pressure at all for me to break this figure, but I don't want to because I don't want to spend another 30 goddamn dollars on one. And this is something I really wanted to display. So that's Batgirl. All right. And finally, it's the cat women. I bring them uh, both in here at the same time because they are pretty much with the exception of the head sculpt are the same exact figure. You have the same exact body, um, the same exact, you know, uh, arms or whatever, legs, feet, clothes, whatever. It's the same shit, same body, different head sculpt, um, maybe even the same, like, look, Eartha Kit, they gave her the, the more Caucasian body underneath just because you just barely see the neck, so who gives a shit? Um, and that's that, like, so it's pretty much the same thing. The only thing that's the difference is the sculpt. So let's take a look at these sculpts. Let's take a look at Julie Newmar first. Holy shit, this mask is a fucking problem. Um, it's, from certain angles, it looks okay, and from certain angles, it looks like shit. Um, if they had done a more solid plastic piece that would, you know, that could be molded to the face or uh, not molded to the face, but shaped closer to the face that would sit there perfectly and still have the elastic band around the back because it's removable. Um, I mean, look at without it. She looks great. It's a great looking uh, sculpt on the face. It's a great looking look. Look, her makeup looks awesome. She looks really good. It's just that, like this mask obscures it, and it really looks like it take. It looks really terrible. It's got the little necklace. Um, these hands are are uh, one 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 off for for Catwoman here. It's the the made just for Catwoman. Proprietary is what I wanted to say. They've got the 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 cat claws, the the long fingernails on there, and uh, and their their sculpted arms there, and uh, all the way up. I think. Nope, they go up to a uh, to a skin colored um, piece on the arm there. So these are these are a pretty good build. And the problem with this one, um, my Julie Newmar no more one, look, it's strung so tight that you can't get her arm to sit properly. So there's that. Now let's take a look at Eartha Kit. Um, 
Another great looking sculpt. It's hard to tell with this fucking mask on, but look at this. They they put the, the, the ears are sculpted on there. The top of her hair sculpted there, and then they plugged it in. Very nice, very nice. Nice little um, ponytail right there. Looks fantastic. This is a great looking figure. Let's take off the, uh, the mask and see what she looks like underneath there. This is a great looking sculpt. This isn't a bad sculpt at all. And uh, when you're when you're looking at a tiny toy company like Figures Toy Company, um, you know you don't know what to expect. And especially when it comes to the, these women sculpts and what Mego has done, um, yeah, this has got to be both of these have got to be you know home runs as far as the sculpt is concerned. The bodies on the other hand need some work, um, but uh, beyond that. The Catwoman, they, they were must-gets because if you're going to get the main villains, here, here's one of the main villains right here. It's uh, Catwoman. All right, surf's up, dudes. It's uh, time for variants and variants that um, I did not obviously get them all. They made hundreds, it feels like, variants in this line. And um, it was nearly impossible, especially since some of them were exclusives and are long since sold out. Um, the, the, it was going to be impossible for me to get every single variant. But two variants that I'm glad that I did get are this Batman and Joker from the Surf's Up Joker episode. Um, they come, they are basically your Batman and Joker figures, the original figures that we saw from series one. They put a, a, a pair of trunks on them, um, which are kind of cool, and they came with surfboards. Um, so there's really not, not much more going on to these. The sculpt on this Joker looks way better than the one um, from, or at least the paint job on this one looks way better than the one from series one that I had where the mustache is all globbed on. They just did a little bit of a dry brush there to show you that the mustache is there on this one and he looks awesome. Um, this Batman looks exactly the fucking same um, with the exception that he's wearing a little pair of fucking shorts over his Batman costume. It's same build, same, same figures, same old shit, um, except you know, you get a pair of trunks and a surfboard, um, a piece here. You got the uh, Batman symbol on both sides of Batman surfboard. It has the little fin on the bottom there, and the uh, Joker's face on the on the top of his surfboard. Unfortunately, not on the other side. These were basically made to be displayed in the box, and thank goodness, Figures Toy Company's boxes are resealable, um, so that you can display these figures because they are pretty neat. They're they are they are a lot of fun. They were figures that I absolutely positively wanted to get when I first saw the variants out there. These were the variants that I wanted to get, and I am glad. I'm still glad I got them. These are still awesome figures. It's a Surf's Up Joker, Batman, and the Joker. And finally, um, we'll end this whole thing with one last variant. The Emerald City exclusive Riddler. Um, no mask in a in a suit in his uh, question mark suit um, from the first uh, episode one um, I believe of the Batman TV show uh, Frank Gorshin as the Riddler super awesome you already you already know how I feel about Frank Gorshin he's amazing um, this figure is awesome this was one that I definitely 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 wanted to get once I saw it it was a little bit more difficult having to order it from uh, Emerald City directly um, Emerald City Comics um, but did get it uh, picked it up and um, and not uh, not fucking disappointed at all very fucking cool looking suit you open it up here um, he's got the tie. It's the three pieces. Look at that. Got the, the question marks on the inside of the suit as well. You got his little vest. He got his tie with the question mark on it. He comes with a little bowler cap. Um, the bowler cap fits great on the head. Um, you can take it off, put it on. It's got a grabby hand. Um, and there's one problem. There's one goddamn problem with this figure because it would have been perfect. This is, uh, it's, it's nine tenths. We're almost there. And, and for all the disappointment and all of the, uh, all the problems, all the issues, all the little bullshit that we've seen so far in this series and, and uh, half the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm quitting before I fucking finish all these things 
is not just because they raised the fucking price on the on the figures that come in the little wacky cardboard boxes. It's because of stuff that they miss. And one thing is missing, and I'm sure all of you are already, you know, fans of the of this character, are already looking to, to, to see where is the cane. One thing they they missed out on is Riddler's cane. He didn't come with the with the jumpsuit Riddler. He didn't come with the removable cowl or removable mask Riddler, as far as I know. And he doesn't come with this one either. Um, he does come with this hat, which is pretty fucking dope. But there's one little piece missing, and it's that cane. And I wish he did come with that one. I mean, I guess I could buy another version of the Riddler that does come with one, because they do. Figures Toy Company makes a goddamn Riddler that comes with that cane. And they didn't, they chose not to give him the cane with this one, um, the little question mark top cane. Um, also, this one, no fucking socks. Just give him a pair of socks! Just give him some black socks. Would that have been so fucking hard? So, a couple points off here and there, but still a figure that I, I really, really enjoy having. Um, almost, to me, even more definitive uh, version of the Riddler than uh, the uh, jumpsuit Riddler. Um, I'll take this one any day of the week. It's uh, the Emerald City Comics exclusive uh, Riddler. Okay, so at the end of the series, at the end of the day, there's good things and there's bad things about Figures Toy Company's Batman TV show figures. Uh, the sculpts can be really, really good. The paint jobs can be pretty, pretty goddamn good. The accessories can be good. The outfits can be fantastic. There's a lot of pluses uh, when it comes to these figures. And originally, when I was purchasing these figures, another plus sign was that I was getting these figures in the little cardboard box for $20 plus ship a piece. And uh, when it comes to value, I mean, there's really no arguing that that is a great price for these figures. 20 bucks is a fucking bargain. So you can almost eliminate a lot of the problems. The problems include the brittle build of the body. Figures Toy Company's sort of sometimes shoddy, sometimes misses a few details worksmanship here and there. Uh, the, the fact that these bodies are made um, overseas and they're really, I mean, everything's made overseas. Let's not fucking fuck around here. Everything's made in Hong Kong, but these seem to be on the cheaper side of the scale. And yeah, Figures Toy Company does continue to make improvements, and yes, they are now making a lot of their figures, are going to be making all of their figures moving forward on S-Type or bandless bodies. That's great. That's a great thing, and I wish, I wish they had been doing it for this series, because um, that for all of its faults, this was still a very, very good series of figures to go through, and honestly, I would be willing to pay $30 for one of these figures if it was bandless. To buy it on that clamshell, that high quality resealable clamshell that displays great and looks nice. You can take it out of the box and look at it and enjoy it, display it if you want to. Or if you don't, you wanna put it away, you wanna like, you know, kinda of cycle things in and out, you got a big collection, guess what? Comes with a resealable box, you put it right back in the box, it goes away into a closet, into a tub somewhere, and for the next time, that you want to bring it out or if you want to resell it if you want to fucking uh, sell it to somebody that, that didn't have a chance to, to pick these up in the first place you can you can you know he's like ah oh, these things have kind of done their their part in my collection and now i'm done with them you resell them and you have that it adds value to it and that's great these things this is a good series of figures and i know i bitched and complained and yelled and screamed and and had a lot of problems with this series and I still do but at the end of the day are these figures worth getting well they were <laughs> they were at $20 a piece for those cardboard boxes they were absolutely worth getting and collecting as many of them that you could but at the end of the day when you raise the price to $30 for, you know, for a, a figure in a cardboard box, for a figure in a plastic bag, for a figure 
that, uh, it, that, that comes in one of those clamshells, it still seems a little steep for the lack of quality overall. These are supposed to be toys. It's Figures Toy Company, and um, they don't really, I wouldn't hand these to a little kid and expect them not to get broken. But still, Figures Toy Company's Batman TV show figures, pretty fucking cool.